Welcome to the More Than Fitness Podcast. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Minisode number 151 on the More Than Fitness Podcast. Uh, we have a dreary day going on in Lexington, KY at the moment. Uh, a little bit rainy, but it's all good because it's all sunshine and rainbows here with Matt McLeod on the More Than Fitness Podcast. And that is exactly how we're going to start off this mini-sode on making your workouts adaptable to your life. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this uh, topic was uh, it actually spurred from a Instagram post that I made yesterday uh, about one of the uncommon mistakes that I think a lot of you guys are making that I think many people are making. And that is just essentially you get, uh, assuming you have a workout plan in the first place, a lot of you not calling any of you out, but you might just be going in the gym and just kind of winging it, right? You're just kind of doing maybe something that you've always done or something that you've done in the past that maybe it worked for you. So you're trying it again, or maybe you found a free workout plan on the internet, or maybe you even downloaded or uh, maybe you even bought one that was for, let's say, four days per week, right? So you're in the gym four days per week, uh, but what and what I'm saying here is just like, what should you do whenever you can only make it to the gym three days per week or two days per week, right? Or what if you're traveling and you need to get in a hotel workout that only has dumbbells only, or you need to get a body weight workout in? It's just like, what are some of these adjustments that you um, need to make so that you can continue to make progress. Uh, and the main thing we want to do is to avoid that all or nothing mentality where it's just like, okay, if you have a plan that is four days per week, and then you can only make it three days per week, how do we prevent ourselves from only getting to the gym like two days per week, per week, for example, right? Whenever that's the case, because you're like, well, I can't even get every single day of my workout program in anyway. So I'm just going to make it two days because the week's already ruined anyway. And I'll just, I'll start fresh next week. Whenever I'm back home, I'm back in my routine uh, or things have settled down or whatever it is so that then, okay, now I can give it my full effort. Whereas I think it might be more beneficial for you and definitely for your results over time, because you can be more consistent. I think this is one of the biggest things. Um, one of the biggest, like I hate saying it, but like unlocks that happens whenever people come to work with me one-on-one -on -one is because I'm literally just their problem solver to them staying more consistent over time. And if you can stay more consistent over time, you're simply going to see more results. If you can do more of the effective things more consistently, it's very simple. You're going to see more results. So it's just like, that's, that's kind of the unlock that we're going here for. Um, yes, that we're going for here, switched it up dyslexic. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and jump into things, making your workouts adaptable to your life. Let's just go ahead. <clears throat> since I already mentioned that one example of Let's say you're working out normally five days per week, and let's say you are doing, let's say you're doing a, you could do a, honestly, honestly, it doesn't even matter exactly the, the type of split that you are doing, but whenever we go from five days per week to four days per week, um, Basically, in order to match the same amount of volume that you are doing with the five days per week, so you're working out five days per week, you're going to be doing a certain amount of sets and reps basically throughout those entire five days. Okay, so now if we need to reduce that down to four days, what we may have to do is we may have to bump up the amount of volume in those four days so that it can match the same amount of volume that you were doing within the five days, right? So the on that fifth day, basically we're gonna have to spread out some of those sets throughout the other four days of the week. You following? And you can either do this by adding in different sets, like adding more sets to some of the exercises, or maybe instead what you're gonna have to do is just take out some of the uh, isolation exercises instead and, and really focus on those bigger bang for your buck 
exercises, your main movements, your compound multi-joint movements. Uh, and that's kind of the, the gist that I'm trying to get across here. As you start to decrease the amount of days that you work out, the more important it is just as a, like a broad overview to really make sure that those main lifts are getting the majority of your intensity and your effort and your volume. So the, the most amount of work that you're doing in those workouts needs to go towards those because it makes much more sense if you're trying to make a more developed body to, let's say, for example, put a lot of effort into doing a bench press as opposed to putting a lot of effort into like a cable fly, right? Because in a bench press, you're going to be working a large part of your upper body musculature. You, you're hitting a lot more muscle groups with one exercise, whereas with something like a cable fly or a pec deck, you're primarily isolating the uh, pecs, right? So as you decrease the amount of days that you work out, you're probably going to be emphasizing more of those compound movements and less of the isolation movements. Um, so I think a, a better example would be going from like four days to three days per week. So four days, let's say you're doing an upper lower split. So you're having two upper days and two lower days, right? And then you're going to switch that down to three days per week. So how can we still make sure that we're making our program effective um, with fewer days in the week? right? Um, and how I would do that, there's plenty of different ways that you can do this. Sorry if you guys notice I keep itching my nose, I'm talking, I'm vibrating my nose. It's itching. It's all good though, because I do this in one take. I don't edit. Well, not usually. Um, nose is going to be itchy. It's just part of life. It's how it is. This is the raw, real shit that you guys sign up for. So here we are. My nose itches because I'm an adult, nose hairs. Anyway, unnecessary. Um, yes, going from four days to three days, we want to make sure that we have those um, matched in terms of a lot of different variables. But let's say since we are going to three days per week, and normally we were doing a four day split of upper lower, we were doing two days upper, two days lower. It doesn't make sense for us to, if we go to three days per week. Uh, can you imagine if, well, so even just in the sense of upper lower, and of course you can do this if you want to bias maybe your upper body more than your lower body. It doesn't make as much sense if you wanna balance everything out to do an upper, lower, and then another upper day, right? Because then your lower body, in most cases, is going to get less work and less balanced work than if you did, let's say, upper, lower, and then full body, right? Because then you're gonna hit everything twice per week. That's kind of the main Whenever you're thinking about these, how can I hit everything, each muscle group at least twice per week? I'm not saying that you have to kill everything, kill every single muscle group, group tri twice per week. Can't talk twice per week. However, um, the literature shows that hitting the, these muscles more frequently at least twice per week is probably going to lead itself to better muscle gains than if you only do them once per week. So this is why of doing a bodybuilding bro split is not usually optimal for most people because it only tends to hit uh, or really focus on these certain muscle groups once per week. And so your body can, those muscle groups can take more stimulus throughout the week. And so that's kind of what we're trying to take advantage here of as we start to decrease the amount of days that we're lifting per week. So if you go from four days uh, of an upper lower split, hitting upper twice, hitting lower twice, and then you try to match that with the three days per week, for example, then the upper day, a lower day, and a full body day makes sense. Another thing that would make sense would be having three full body days. This is something that I also do with, with some of my clients, and this just allows you to hit um, essentially full body every single time that you go in. And I think that this is probably, if you really want to maximize everything, I think doing full body three days per week is, is going to be ideal. And this is where, like I just mentioned, this doesn't mean that you're going to be killing like for your legs. For example, you're not going to be killing your legs three days per week, every single time that you go in, instead of doing, let's say 12 sets of legs on one day, we're going to do 12 sets of legs over three days, right? So you're going to do four sets of legs on Monday, four sets of legs on Wednesday, and four sets of legs on Friday. And what this actually does and why this can be super beneficial instead of doing the 12 sets in a row is because if, think about it. 
right? If you do 12 sets in one day, well, sets eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you're not going to be as fresh for those lifts. You're going to have some fatigue built up from earlier in the session. So you might not be able to lift as much weight as if you did it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you just give yourself four all out sets on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're probably going to be able to accumulate more total volume, more total work than the person who tries to do all 12 of those sets within one day. Right, so this is just kind of how I want you to think about it um, as you as you decrease the amount of days that you would lift per week. Another big thing would be the intensity. So not only thinking about the the volume changes from going from five days per week to let's say three days per week, uh, but also the intensity. Right, meaning you can go harder the fewer days you go per week. So if you're lifting five days per week, you're gonna have to make sure that you manage your fatigue pretty well throughout the week because you're just, you're lifting very frequently. So you're in the gym very often. So you're stressing these muscles, you're stressing your body more frequently than if you were in the gym two days per week. So you may have to, instead of going a 10 out of 10 on your effort five days per week, whenever you're, whenever you're, if you want to do five days per week successfully, you may want to, at least in the beginning stages of your workout program, this can get really complicated with like periodization and like progressive overload over the course of, let's say four, eight, 12 weeks or something like that. Uh, However, the more times that you lift per week, the lower intensity you probably need to go each day because it's going to add up, right? So instead of going at a 10 out of 10 for five days per week, maybe if you're lifting five days per week, you need to go at like a seven or eight out of 10 on the effort scale for those five days so that you can spread out your work equally while also making sure that you're managing your fatigue appropriately. Because it's not always necessarily Uh, Well, actually, for sure, whenever it comes to lifting, it's not about how much work you can do in a single session. It's how much work can you do in that single session so that it then allows you to do just as much or more work in later sessions, right? So it's just like, how can you continue to match your intensity in those later sessions without um, uh, uh making sure that your fatigue is too high, right? So how can you match that intensity without making your fatigue go too high? This is why if you try to go at a 10 out of 10, five days per week, you're gonna be burnt out really quickly. You're probably gonna injure yourself. Uh, You're probably going to, your your fatigue's just gonna build very quick. You're gonna realize it's not gonna be sustainable. Um, However, on the flip side of that, if you decide to go down to two or three days per week, for example, well then you're you're gonna have a lot more days of rest. So if you're only going to the gym three times per week, well, then you can probably push that intensity up there to about a nine or a 10 on those three days because you're going to have four other days for the most part where you're resting, right? So you're going to have more time to allow that fatigue to subside. Uh, and and you want to really make sure that during if you're only going to lift three times per week, that you go pretty hard during those three days. Right. So this is just it's just kind of how it works out. When if you're lifting more often, more frequently, uh, you're going to have to make sure that you manage your fatigue accordingly. And you can't just go balls to the wall every single day or all those negative uh, effects are going to happen that I just mentioned. Um, So as you as you go down. So this is why if you're only lifting two days per week, it's really important that your intensity within those two days per week is so both of those days are probably going to be full body, right? Because we want to hit everything twice per week. And we're also probably going to go to failure on most of those lifts, right? So we're going to make sure that we whenever I say go to failure, I'm saying that if you're doing uh, uh, if you're doing three sets of 10 on, on bench press, for example, it would probably be a good idea on the first two sets, maybe to go at a nine out of 10 on intensity, but then on the very last set, then you can probably end up going to failure because you're going to have so many other days to allow that fatigue to go away. Um, and that's how you're going to make sure that you get in enough hard work, hard, effective sets per week. Uh, whenever you're only lifting two or three times per week, you have fewer opportunities to get more effective quality hard sets in whenever you're only lifting two or three times per week compared to whenever you're lifting five days per week. 
Uh, I know that this can get kind of uh, gray, but I hope I'm, I'm doing an okay job of explaining this. It's just the fewer days that you have, the fewer opportunities you're going to have to get in total amount of work. So you need to go pretty hard within those within those two days. And then of course, the very last one would be like home workouts, for example, right? At home workouts, you definitely want, since you're already gonna have very um, uh, little resistance in the first place, it's like, yeah, you, you probably need to go to failure on most of those lifts. And if that takes uh, 10 reps or 30 reps, you still want to try and max that out because the intensity is already gonna be so naturally low because you don't have any extra load, right? You don't have a barbell or a dumbbell or something like that to increase and ramp up that intensity. So whenever you do a home workout, whenever you just do body weight workouts, that's whenever you really wanna push it and get close to failure on most of those days. Um, so that's kind of the, the broad overview here. Uh, I realized that I'm already at 15 minutes. I can talk, can't I? Um, other quick things is just playing around with like rest periods. Uh, so, so playing around with rest periods, more importantly, would be actually probably like antagonistic supersets. This is just a trick that I like to use with clients whenever they, let's say, because normally maybe they have an hour to work out in the gym, but this time they need to do their workout in 30 minutes. Well, then antagonistic supersets can be one of your best friends. And what antagonistic means is you're pairing like chest and back together, right? So a push and a pull. So you would do a bench press and a dumbbell row, for example, because what you do on the, the bench press isn't going to affect the amount of work that you can probably do on that dumbbell row. So pairing those together is one way that we can match the same, get, or at least get close to the same amount of volume as if we were just doing straight sets, where if we were just doing bench press, resting, and then we went to the next set, uh, or we went to the next exercise, which was dumbbell rows. Instead, we're gonna pair those together, um, and we're gonna superset those back and forth. Uh, and so, yeah, I think th that's going to be the, the big rocks with this one, making sure that you understand going from five days per week to four days per week to three days per week to two days per week, right? It's just the, the fewer amount of times that you work out, you want to make sure that you are getting in enough volume, but also you can also ramp up that intensity. So it's all about managing that volume, that intensity, and also the, uh, the recovery within that given time that you have. Uh, and so if you have any questions about this, because I know it can get uh, kind of in the weeds, definitely let me know, send me a message. If this sparks any questions, I would love to help you out. Uh, and I am going to call this one there. Like, subscribe, rate, and review, all that fun stuff. Thank you guys, as always, for listening and for watching. See ya.